I've decided to vlog my House of Earth and Blood experience strictly on TikTok. Why? Because I just, I feel, I feel as though I want to. I'm also buddy reading this with two friends because I cannot experience this without sharing my thoughts. But I think this will be fun because I'm going into this totally blind. I know nothing. I know nothing. I just know it's apparently urban fantasy featuring a half fae. That's it. So I turn to the first page where it has the four houses of Midgard. And it tells me all the creatures that are going to be in here. And I was like, wow, did not expect that. So now it all makes sense why this is called the House of Earth and Blood, because that's like the shifters, humans, witches, animals. A whole plethora. I mean, I should have known that because it's an urban fantasy book. But for some reason, I was like, oh, it's just going to be fey or like mostly fey. You know, I was thinking more like fever series kind of stuff. No. No, this is all of it, which has me very intrigued. I'm nine pages in, and people said the world building was really info dumpy in the beginning, and whew, I am an experienced fantasy reader, um, and urban fantasy, and like, this is a lot. <laughs> like, this is, like, Sarah, calm down. Um, I, like, I need you to just, like, wait a little bit. Maybe, is there a, is there, like, an index back here? I don't know. Like, it's just, it is a lot. Um, I'm following, but I'm also like, can you explain this just a little more spread out. Also, with the whole Midgard thing um, and their spelling of hell, like hell from Norse mythology, I'm like, is this supposed to be Norse? Lots of, lots of info dumping at the beginning, but I will push through. I will persevere. I'm reading through House of Earth and Blood for the first time, totally blind, don't know anything about it, and here is my reaction to chapter two. Danica turns into a wolf, but when she's a wolf, she can still talk with her human voice. But then when Bryce's mom called, she shifted back <laughs> the doctor on the phone. Bryce could have just held the phone up to her mouth, probably, right? I don't know. <laughs> they just mentioned the drop, which is how they get their immortality. Uh, and I suspect something's going to go wrong with that. This is my theory. Again, haven't read it. No idea. Um, but it's like Danica is going to get all this power and be like the most alpha blah, blah, blah. And I'll have like nothing. And I'm like... As the main character of uh, a third math book, I don't believe you. <laughs> I think, I think something's gonna happen. Um, also, people keep saying like, "Tell us your reaction to chapter five. and I think that's the chapter that everyone says they cry at. And I'm like, I highly doubt I'm gonna get attached to characters enough by chapter five. You're probably all gonna leave snarky comments to me about that. But like, I have two more chapters before chapter five, and I don't know if I'm gonna be that attached. So we'll see. I'm reading through House of Earth and Blood for the first time and going in completely blind. I don't know anything about this. I never read the synopsis or anything. This is my reaction to chapters three and four. I'm starting to get a sense of the world now. At first, I was kind of like, what sort of world is this? This mix of fantasy and modern. And now I'm like, okay, it's very much modern. When I say I don't know anything about this book, the only things I do know are some of the character names. So we have her talking about like a guy and then there's a werewolf that also has a crush on her. And I'm like, you're not going to be the one she's with because I know the names of the two people that are in the ship wars. I don't know anything about them. I don't know when they get introduced, but I know that they exist. Also, is Sarah J. Moss becoming self-aware? Uh, because she's using the term alpha hole, and I know for a fact that people are using the term alpha hole to sort of like criticize her alpha males in a lot of books. So is she, does she know? Is that a little like nod to that? Interesting. I still fully believe an alpha male is going to arise and be the way that they are. So, I don't know. Self-awareness while still doing it, I'm assuming. Uh, who knows? But next up is the famous chapter five. So I'm going to read that and then basically immediately react to it. I will say, and I'll reference this again, I literally don't know anything about this. So I hope that you guys are going to refrain from leaving like little hints and stuff in the comments post chapter five. Like I already knew about chapter five being a thing before going into this, but like after this, I truly know nothing. So please don't hint at stuff or talk about stuff in the comments because I see that. I get that I'm taking a risk doing this on TikTok and having a reaction, but you're basically ruining the reaction for yourselves too in the entertainment if you're giving me hints at stuff. So try to not do that post chapter five because I already know about the chapter five thing. I'm reading through House of Earth and Blood for the first time, totally blind, don't know anything about it, besides the people have been mentioning in the comments that chapter five is a big deal. So here is me pre-chapter five. Okay, I just finished it, uh, chapter five. 
maybe it's because I was warned that there was like something. Um, uh, yeah, I was not upset. I kind of figured that they were all gonna die. Um, and people said it was like, oh, it's really like someone in the comments said it was like really gory or whatever. And I'm like, maybe it's because I just finished reading a bunch of urban fantasy, like adult urban fantasy uh, that uh, this last week. That shit was way gorier and like more horror and whatever than that. Like this was nothing. This was nothing. Um, that, that that's not discrediting if you were upset by this chapter. I was like not shocked. This is like very classic urban fantasy and like low on the violence, honestly, in that chapter. So yeah. Um, is it sad? I, I guess, but I also like didn't really know those characters that died. Um, sucks that she was real high when that happened. Yikes. Um, also, she, like, ran after this thing, and I'm like, girl, you are in, in no, like, you don't have the capacity right now. Um, but, yeah, um, chapter five did not particularly stand out to me. Uh, from here on out, I don't know things. Thank you for making my whole phone shake by doing that. I am reading House of Earth and Blood for the first time, knowing nothing going in. And these are my reactions to part one up through chapter seven. We met Hunt, who I know is one of the love interests, an angel, mm -hmm. and he has lightning powers. <laughs> we love to see it. Danica's mom's a huge bitch. We kind of knew that, but I'm also like, whenever you have like a older female character just being like bitchy for kind of no reason, I sort of hate that. Hopefully she'll get more nuanced if she's sticking around. I can see why people say the first bit is like kind of slow. It's still really easy to read, um, so I'm not necessarily like slogging through it, but it's kind of like, okay, so we just set up the fact that like, her friends were murdered and she's like sort of all alone now before we do the rest of the stuff so yeah nothing super exciting to say for part one okay i'm back house of earth and blood first time reading through going in totally blind not knowing anything about it this is chapters 8 through 12. so we get more of her like half brother rune i think is his name being like very defensive of her it's like uh, he's like the full fae and it, they kind of say like oh they used to be closer or whatever he acts more like someone in that should be close to her but um apparently they're not so we don't really have information about that quite yet but we do get a lot more about hunt i actually didn't expect there to be multiple povs in this we've gotten isaiah's pov and hunts um and we're getting like more information about like the angels these like sort of fallen angels like that's sort of the vibe of like they fought for the wrong side and now they're atoning for things Th that's kind of a vibe i'm kind of into it and again he has lightning powers which i love and we just found out the big like dun 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 that the vampire that she did the little deal with was killed in the same way as Danica and the pack. So the person they thought did it probably didn't. But now now the angels came and like the archangel Micah, which apparently he's like super powerful. Uh, they came and were like, Bryce, you're going to solve this. <laughs> I'm like, with what? And, and even she's like, how? Um, but the fact that they're like pulling her in but they put hunt on her like security detail so it's all probably to bring them together but i'm still like in what like at least in other urban fantasies the female like main characters are uh, experienced in this and like mystery solving stuff when they get pulled into like police stuff here i'm like what are her credentials uh but we'll see what she does with this I'm reading through House of Earth and Blood for the first time, never having read it before, and these are my reactions to chapters 13 through 16. I think Rune is my favorite character so far. I like him the most. I don't know why, um, because he can be like a little ridiculous like all of the men in this book, but he has shadow abilities, and Hunt having electrical abilities, Rune having shadow abilities, those are like some of my two favorite magical powers. So. That's a good thing. I'm enjoying the magic stuff so far. It's kind of funny that he's like a 75-year-old party boy, but whatever. I like that she has a chimera as a pet. That's lovely and hilarious. Oh, maybe it's also, as far as Rune, like his little oracle thing, that the bloodline will end with you. Mysterious. Also, I don't know if this was important, um, but when he was high and she came, Bryce came to his room, um, and like he felt like the sword was singing... I'm like, was that you being high, or is that is this just a hint to her powers? Because we know there's going to be something with her. For fuck's sake, just get around to it. Much to, I'm sure, Mari's chagrin, um, I don't necessarily notice all the M dashes that Sarah J. Moss uses, um, but the incessant use of the word hell uh, is just like, <sighs> please, please pick another swear 
to use, although sometimes she does use alpha hole instead, which I thought when she did it earlier, I was like, oh, she's becoming self-aware. No, she's like still doing the same things, but she's like, look, I'm labeling it as alpha hole. And I'm like, mm, it was, it was kind of a cute little nod at first, but now that you keep doing it and using it as an actual word, a little bit annoying. I see why people say this first part drags a bit because obviously like she's just kind of fucking around and not doing any of the investigating. Once it gets to that bit, which I'm almost near the 200 page mark and I think people said it started to speed up there, um, then I think it'll get better. It's not bad now. Like her books are really easy to read. That's one of the reasons why they're so popular. Um, so it's not like a struggle for me, but it's still just like, oh my God, come on. I've seen a few people mention that this reminds them of Zootopia. And like, they're not wrong. Uh, there was like a moment where uh, Hunt saw some like quail shifters crossing the road. And I was like, this feels very much like background Zootopia vibes. So <laughs> and I've never felt that way about another urban fantasy book. I don't know what it is about this specifically. Also, the Fae and the Angels hating each other. Kind of interesting for me because you, you feel like they're almost like similar. And the fact that like there's like a, a feud between them. An interesting little twisty twist. Okay, yes, this. With the alpha hole comments in House of Earth and Blood, when she first did it, I was like, oh, she's getting self-aware. She's heard the criticism, blah, blah, blah. The fact that it keeps coming up is, yes, it feels very, like, performative. And also, it's like she's not actually changing the way that she writes these male characters because she's still writing them as alpha holes. Sure, Hunt has more substance i'm sure whatever the whole point is when you're having these sort of yes very alpha male angry blah, characters okay either lean into that and just be like that's what i do and i'm not even gonna address it don't have the characters being like oh my god you're such an alpha hole i hate it i'm sticking up to you and then not actually changing the way that you write the characters susan dennard has done some talks about this about how she originally was writing one of her characters in the witchlands as like an alpha hole and changed his arc and that was done so well so i encourage you to look into that if you want to know what i'm talking about with this reading through house of earth and blood for the first time not knowing anything going in and these are my reactions to chapter 17 through 19 we finally get to some investigating yes i do love that she was kind of dragging hunt around like she was actually doing stuff and he didn't realize that she was doing stuff and she was sort of like sticking it to him and we're starting to kind of see how like sure i don't know if micah knew that she had like these sort of connections i guess with the like antique shop she did but the fact that she's like okay i know things like i know about sort of like the black market i know how to get a hold of things because of my work at the antique shop so that's making slightly more sense she goes and gets summoning salts which i think was kind of smart again she gets the viper queen um to talk to them in that way but also like hans like i'm still suspicious of her and her boss and i'm like really do like i get that you think she's stupid but do you really think that she was gonna be like hi i know how to get all this stuff because i obviously did it like his just incessant belief that she's dumb even though i know that's the facade that she's put on is just annoying um like okay whenever you have characters like the male character in particular in a story being like you know she's so stupid she's so vapid and then eventually realizes like oh she's not it's just a, a narrative that i don't really tend to like because she's obviously showing herself to be like at least a little bit smart even for him to be able to acknowledge that like she got him to follow her to like show up all angry so that her scooter wouldn't get stolen like smart you know like she she does some of these things she got the viper queen to talk to them way sooner than going through the official channels so yeah like his incessant need for her him to be like oh she's obviously the killer but also she's stupid i'm like these two things don't match up i also think it's funny that the viper queen's office was a bit of a wreck uh because it subverts expectations and i think it was just kind of cute and since the viper queen gave them a little bit of a hint uh there's something to kind of go off of it's the start of the like real investigation i feel like we're gonna get into stuff hopefully i'm reading through house of earth and blood for the first time not knowing anything about it and these are my reactions to chapters 20 and 21. hear me out i have a theory don't tell me don't hit at me don't do anything but i have a theory so rune meets with hunt and bryce and says that he has to hunt this porn uh and finds out that the demon that killed danica and the vampire and everything well supposedly the vampire um is this demon that hunts the horn basically my theory is that bryce is tied to the horn somehow like that's gonna be her sort of like power thing um, because it would make sense that that's why, like, potentially what I mentioned earlier about, like, the sword sort of singing when he was high, when she was around, um, and then the 
two murders happening after people had contact with her. And then there would probably be something attached to the Raven because obviously she was at the Raven before both of those people died. I don't know if that was just like a coincidence kind of thing. Um, but I'm thinking like, okay, working theory, not that she is the horn, like that, that'd be a little bit too <laughs> complicated, but somehow she has like something attached to the horn. And maybe the demon not going for her is because of that amulet that Jezeba gave her that she wears that is like crazy enchanted and all that. Um, that's my working theory right now. That feels like, again, I am keep trying to be like, what is her like big power thing going to be? Because we know damn well, as a Sarah J. Moss main character, she has to have something huge, you know, like, so that makes the most sense to me. We'll see, though. I'm reading through House of Earth and Blood for the first time, and these are my reactions to chapters 22 through 26. This is when we get a little bit of a flashback to some accident that happened with her and Danica, and it seems like she potentially unleashed power at that point because she told Danica, like, close your eyes, um, and they were something was about to happen, but it hasn't quite been revealed. So this kind of this kind of goes along with my the whole horn idea. It definitely feel like there's a tie there. And then there was this bombing that happened in the Raven, um, which seems like it's sort of tied to everything. Maybe not like maybe that's a red herring and it's not actually tied to it. But also there was a picture of the horn on the bomb. So is it kind of like if someone that's attached to the horn comes in here, then the bomb will go off? Like how does this magic work exactly? Hunt finally found out she's not a vapid party girl. She doesn't drink. She still has a scar that technically was caused by him stapling her up two years ago. Um, that Micah was the one that she saved. Ooh. We obviously haven't gotten to the parts where like they start either like flirting or become potentially a couple because I know people ship them. Um, but so far, I don't I don't think I'm going to necessarily like their dynamic. I know there's a, a another guy option that comes in later on. I'm interested to see what I think about him um, because I know that there's sort of like a, a war going on about who she's going to be with. I'm assuming another Faye comes in because, you know, like the whole Faye mate thing is Sarah J. Moss's big thing. But yeah, him talking about his like past love, I just feel that that was, that's still a thing that he's tied up on years later, you know? I don't know. But not only did we have the bombing, we have another murder of an acolyte that's same demon murder. Um, after they were at the temple exposed to her, basically. So I'm kind of like, I think she, she's attached to the horn in some way. The horn is her. <laughs> I don't think it's necessarily that, but like, that's, that's the power there, in my opinion. My reactions to House of Earth and Blood chapters 27 through 31. Not a ton discussion wise happened here. Rune finds some information on like the Starborn and things. And this just further kind of cements my idea that Bryce is somehow connected to the horn and possibly she has some kind of like starborn abilities or something since they have the same lineage. There was another comment kind of made about the um, gun that is at the gallery and it like sort of making a sound when she's around. Again, I don't know if this is just coincidence and Sarah Jamas is talking about some of these weapons um, happening to like sing, but I don't know. I feel like why even point that out? So either she's connected to the horn somehow, or maybe she's the one that can like mend the horn because it needs light that's not really light and magic that's not really magic. And maybe that's like her, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just guessing, I don't know enough. A little bit of the flirtation is starting between her and Hunt. And again, I'm kind of like, I don't know if I'll ship this. They just ran into Sandriel and she used her whole like vapid girl uh, thing to get them away from her kind of smart but there is that thing and this is kind of an urban fantasy trope thing um where like everyone's in love with her <laughs> like anywhere she goes like micah hits on her like everyone hits on her and i get that she's pretty but also like in a city like this there'd be a lot of pretty people and creatures and things so i don't really understand besides her just being like main character energy that like everyone thinks she's gorgeous the governor archangel like even would hit on her you know um like I don't mind her. I'm sure she's very pretty, but it just seems like a little much, but that is kind of a trope of the genre, so whatever. House of Earth and Blood chapters 32 through 36 reactions. So we get some reveals from the Oracle when Hunt goes to visit, which is kind of interesting. She warns him to stay away from Bryce, and then Bryce says it's because when she went to get her little prophecy, the Oracle tried to rip her own eyes out 
because of how awful her future was. Yikes. But also the Oracle wants to tell him his future. And he's like, yeah, no. But she does say like, oh, I never thought I would see this kind of power again or whatever. Like something's rising in you, which is a little intriguing about him. Then they visit Briggs and we get the reveal that Briggs actually respected Danica, did not want to kill her, uh, wasn't involved in killing her, thought that she might potentially be sympathetic to the cause. And that connects a little bit more to the whole thing going on with the horn, since she was the one that was at the temple when the horn was stolen. Is it like, okay, did she sort of let that happen, possibly? We also get some reveals about both of the characters' like backstories and stuff, particularly Hunts, and this is when they start to kind of be like, oh, there's more to you. This is the very classic Sarah J. Maas scene with the like surly male character when it's like, oh, I found out that you've been tortured or you lost the love of your life or something. Like, there's always something like this. Also, don't mind the city ambiance. My window is open because it's 60 degrees in Chicago today. I need to enjoy it while I can. Then we kind of go zero to 60 with the attraction to each other. Uh, we have a lot of just like sexual language when Hunt is like watching her at one point and it's just like, can we have a little bit of a transition there, please? Then the shooting range scene. I have a quibble with this. Did I kind of like the sniper scene uh, where he shoots through like her bullet thing? Sure. Sure. However, a little contrived. Um, why is she a sharpshooter? There is mention that her stepdad was like a sniper or whatever. So I guess we can infer that her stepdad like taught her how to shoot. However, you don't just like retain sniper skills. Um, that takes a lot of practice. So the fact that it's just like, oh yeah, she can just... I don't believe it. We haven't laid any groundwork for that besides her dad, stepdad being a sniper. It just feels a little too, I'm good at everything with nothing to back that up, really. And believe me, I love a sniper date. Uh, in Mass Effect, one of your love interests, you can go and like basically have like a sniper competition. I love it, I eat that shit up. So it's not that, it's just the like, there's no precedent. It's not like we talk about her going to the shooting range, none of that, like that would be a skill that you would have to maintain, even as a fae, in my opinion. And then he does the whole like, what other alpha holes haven't seen her for who she really is? And I'm like, shut up with the alpha hole thing, please. Anyway, but another murder just happened. So let's see what that's about. House of Earth and Blood chapters 37 through 41. I'm losing track of these numbers. The big reveals were that they're possibly suspecting Sabine, which I was like, that actually kind of makes sense because when she first came to um, see Bryce in the holding cell after Danica died, it wasn't like she was really upset about Danica dying and like it was made very clear that like she kind of viewed her as a rival. And they made the connection that the demon is being summoned around the ley lines, but they also made the connection that the ley lines are around the sewers and that's how the demon's getting around. Right now it's also hanging around like Sabine's stronghold. I'm thinking this is a red herring, honestly, um, but also I'm not sure because Sarah Jamas has a tendency to make some of these twists be like super, super obvious. I'm not going to mention some of the things from like Akatar and Throne of Glass, but there were some things that were like, oh, it's such a, and it's like that I knew this a long time. So it would make sense with it being Sabine, but I also wouldn't be shocked if it wasn't Sabine. We also haven't had enough rune in these last couple of chapters, but we did have him visiting a medwitch. Um, and I was like, is he gonna have a little medwitch romance? I want more witch stuff. I have a feeling that we're not gonna get like a ton of witch stuff, but I want the witch stuff, please. House of Earth and Blood chapters 42 and 43 reactions. We got to see two different places, which is exciting. Um, I loved the mer people and Therion, is that his name? Um, that was great, love him. I hope we get more mermaids. But highlight of this was that there's little otters. <laughs> this is very Zootopia, but there's little otters and they're their messengers. I would also die. Like the moment when she like shrieked when she saw one, like same. I love otters so much and I have friends frequently send me otter videos because I love them. So like that, I dig that. The stuff with the werewolf part of town, Moonwood. <sighs> There's a thing that I hate about like antagonist characters in books in general, and not just this one, but this one is doing it really bad, is when the antagonist refers to the female character as like a slut or bitch, but slut is what's used in this one. And it's just like so irritating. Like for one, I don't understand why Sabine calls her a slut so much. Like, why is that the go-to insult? Like if she wants to, why not just say half-breed? Like why the slut thing? Especially because Sabine wouldn't really care if she was a slut or sleeping with a lot of people or whatever. 
I now get why Ethan was doing it because it explains how like, okay, according to wolves, like they were basically made it even though it's like, okay, it's like very extreme even for werewolf circumstances. So technically they would consider her like cheating on him when he was dying, which it still is like, yikes, but it's not like, she didn't know, you know? So again, people act irrationally in grief. So for him, it like sort of makes a little bit of sense. But even the other girl, uh, like Amelie, that was at the door, like calling her a slut, like, why is, I just hate when the villains refer to the main characters as like sluts. Like, wh why? Why is that? It, it's just, obviously it's misogynistic, but it just seems very lazy because it's like, okay, so you just make your antagonist just be like misogynists to be like, look, they're the villain. Like, can you give them a little bit more than that? Like you can make these characters still be awful without just resorting to that because I always feel like it's lazy writing. But with that being said, honestly, in retrospect, I ship her and Connor more than I ship her and Hunt. Um, I don't really ship her and Hunt at all. Like, again, maybe that'll change, but I'm like more than halfway through. Um, but like the her and Connor thing and like the years of pining for each other and like circling each other and everyone thought they were inevitable, that resonates more. And we literally barely got to see them interact. That resonates more than like the thing kind of brewing with him, especially because like he said, he's always gonna love his like former love. Like I just, I just, I don't, I don't think I can pull for that one. I like her and Connor, oh. House of Earth and Blood, chapters 44 through 46 reactions. I'm not tired, so I'm staying up and reading because I hate nothing more than having insomnia and not using those hours to read. <laughs> but I feel like some juicy stuff just happened, so. We get some explanations, one for why everyone in the pack calls her a slut um, and kind of revealing that like a bunch of the messages were posted everywhere, which is like, damn uh that really sucks so just knowing the way that like our online culture is um this this makes sense right super shitty but now makes sense for sabine it still doesn't quite make sense but she's just hateful so we also do get an explanation like concretely that i already assumed of like her stepdad was the one that taught her how to shoot and taught her self-defense and all this stuff i still think it's kind of flimsy mostly because i've read a number of other urban fantasy books with like tough sort of jack of all trades type female characters that can really defend themselves and shoot and stuff and all those books actually like show that and show them training and all this stuff uh which i just appreciate more because it's a little bit more like showing instead of telling I also do get more of bryce talking about how her only friend now she only has one friend i am so curious about what's going on with Yuri. like why why did you just dip out like that uh curious i want that to be just explained oh there's also some cool stuff talking about the bone quarter so the bone quarter i have questions obviously don't tell me uh, but these are the things i'm thinking right now uh why is there like a whole part of the city where all the dead go um when it's not like this is just a city so where do the dead outside of the city go because it's almost like this is an underworld but it's not really Mm, I am confusion. Uh, I like it though. I want to see the bone quarter so bad. You know that I love the underworld and death stuff. I love it. I want to see it. Is Danica over there? Is she gonna be able to like bring Danica back? Cause, oh, that's another thing. The, the thing with the uh, Oracle was, this was a while ago, but I forgot to mention it. The, w with love, all things persevere, whatever that's on Danica's jacket was what the Oracle said to her. And I'm like, does that mean that she can be brought back to life? I don't know. I know I'm probably reaching um, but I'm also like, why would that be her prophecy if nothing happened with that? So I'm kind of like, is Bryce's love going to be able to like bring her back? And then like you had that scene in like the first couple of chapters where Bryce like goes to like the river, like towards the bone quarter to like do something and then we're never told what that is. Oh my God, I'm going to run out of time. Then we have the demon attack hunt and it gets, it neutralizes him, but then she almost neutralizes it, which gives me suspicion that she's tied to the horn still. Like that's my thing. But then Micah comes and burns up the evidence that is the demon. He says for press reasons, but I'm like, mm. so now I'm a little sus of Micah. I'm like, are you involved? But then it attacked him. So I don't know, but I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that. We've got more house of earth and blood bombshells. Chapters 47 through 50. Turns out Sabine still sucks but was protecting Danica who stole the horn. Which like, I kind of felt like that was maybe a thing because of what Briggs said with like, she might've been a potential ally, like blah, blah, blah. Okay, so Danica stole the horn and then they figure out that the demon that they thought killed Danica wasn't because of the way that the bodies are. 
So there's like potentially a second demon or something. Like these two things are not necessarily connected, but it's not Sabine. I feel like things are finally coming along. I know everyone said that and that the last 200 pages especially are like a whirlwind, but like, goddamn, took so long to get to the point. Also, Bryce is never more relatable than when an otter is around. An otter came to the door and rang the little bell. I also would just die of happiness if that happened. Little things that we get of uh, Hunt thinking sexual thoughts about her, though, I'm just like, it feels out of place. Like, I know it's a Sarah Jamas book and it's all steamy and bleh, but like, it feels out of place here. Um, I don't know. I just don't quite buy it. And also, like, when they're doing a murder investigation and then he's like thinking about sex, like, I get that that happens. It just, it just is really jarring. Also, I forgot to mention this earlier too. Rune's medwitch that knows things about the demon because of like a, a you know mentor she had or whatever. And Flynn was like, "Who is that?" And he's like, "I don't really know." Um, I'm intrigued by her. Are we gonna get witch stuff? Are the witches summoning demons? I am curious. I would like to know more. House of Earth and Blood, chapters 51 to 54. I feel like shit is finally starting to happen. Summoning a demon. <laughs> And summoning a demon prince, first I was like, bad idea. Now I'm like, hello. I'm a little intrigued by Adis. Uh, came out of nowhere, kind of. Didn't expect that. But the, like, we're getting more of the hints of like, what happened with the Oracle? Like, he's wanting her to like, come around when she does the drop. Like, does that mean she's going to get all this power? Like, what is going on? Why is a prince of hell interested but i'm okay with it i also actually kind of like when books will do this thing that like demons and hell are like not hell as in the christian hell but like another dimension demons from another dimension totally fine with me i do wish that fantasy books though would start being like okay it's not just evil horrible creatures in another dimension there's also like other kinds of people i want a book to finally do that the like it's not just horrible awful beings coming through it's also something like there, there's people that actually like living there. Uh, that's what I would like instead of it being like, oh, it's hell, it's horrible. It's like uh, they probably like it if they're made for that place. But after that, we have her figuring out that there was like fate tech that could have helped with the investigation two years ago. And she like runs out to like her father's place to try to yell at him. And I'm like, what for? Like, it, it just seems like a waste of it. Cut that chapter out. Like it's shit like that where it's like, why? Why did you just waste? That time, for what? So they could have, her and Hunt could have a little bit of like a disagreement after because she went and had some whiskey after that when really like, why was this the tipping point? I don't know. It just seems like excessive when this book is so long. But then we get Hunt going and doing another murder and coming back um, mentally scarred. And there's like a comfort scene where she like, she like washes his wings and that, I started to like it then, okay? I don't know if I fully ship it, but like a little bit. Like she comforts big bad warrior man and like washes his body and it's all like not sexual and like they like cuddle in bed. That That's cute. I haven't seen a really good comfort chapter in quite some time. I know it's a bigger thing in fan fiction, but I haven't read any fan fiction in a while. And I'm like, oh, I missed this. I like it when characters do this. Yes, very good. So I don't think I'll fully ship them, but I don't, I don't hate it. He like grabs her arm for her to stay. I, I, that, the comfort stuff, I'm like, yes, I love this. So I, I'm getting slightly more invested in the potential of like their flirtation and stuff. Even though the random sexual thoughts still throw me off. They still throw me off. Like I think they were literally something demon and he was thinking about sex. Anyway, anyway, it made up for it with the comfort chapter. <laughs> House of Earth and Blood chapters 55 through 60. We've got synth stuff. So found out that synth is a magic, that's not a magic, that's a drug that has healing properties, blah, blah, blah. I immediately flipped back to the beginning because I was like, I'm pretty sure that's the drug that Fury told her not to like look into at all. Yes, it is. So this is obviously going to be the thing that can heal the horn. Like it's all very obviously tied together, but we're still <laughs> having chapters where stuff is not happening. And I'm like, just do it. <laughs> this does add to the slow burn of the romance though. I will say Sarah Jamas for all of her writing faults can do a slow burn romance super well. So are her and Hunt kind of growing on me? Yes, 
I don't think they will be my end game. I want this new person that everyone says gets introduced at the end of this book to come in so I can be like, who do I like better? I just want to know. But anyway, found out Obsidian Salt is in the synth. The synth was in like all the victims' clothes, particularly Danica's. Danica was potentially selling or confiscating synth. Wow, needy. Part of me, this is a stretch, but part of me is like, okay, since Black Obsidian Salt is in the synth, could people have been taking it and then that's how they're dying because it's almost like summoning a demon like out of them. That seems like a stretch. But the fact that there's like not a demon that they've been able to identify or see or anything or, oh no, this is, this is what I thought. <laughs> Maybe it's like, this was one of, my, one of my theories that I had. Maybe it's like turning them into the Crystallos demons or whatever. Like it's coming, bleh. I don't know. I feel like that's a little bit too spooky horror for Sarah J Moss. But maybe, I'm just theorizing. I like that we got her mom and her stepdad's little love story, background story, cute. I love a like bodyguard romance. Short story mayhaps, I won't read it. I don't read short stories that have to do with series, but would be a good idea because they seem cute. Then we have the whole Danica's birthday, everyone forgetting. Uh, this is depicting grief like pretty well. And then um, somehow the werewolves like, got to the croissants and wrote trash on there which is like very like give it up like don't you have better things to do but hunt going and like threatening amelie very satisfying we love to see it uh i don't think like i don't like when sort of like alpha males will like fight other men over the woman but like defending her absolutely 100 percent love that so like i said i'm shipping them slightly more and like the slow burn of it all but I, I still just don't think that they're gonna be my endgame couple, you know? House of Earth and Blood, chapter 61 through 66, yikes! So she heals her leg, blah, blah, blah. He's comforting her through it, whatever. He gets punished by getting his wings cut off ah! <laughs> for threatening Amelie because that was Sabine's way of getting revenge. Okay, all that happens. Then we have a little breaky break for a sex scene. <laughs> with his mutilated back, which of course ends horribly because he starts bleeding because it's like a day later. And Bryce discovers that Danica knew things about Synth and everything and that she was like in on these like trials and left hints for her. Um, and then her like building got burnt down um, from the old building so she couldn't look for clues. Okay, all that happens. Then Therion takes her to a Synth drug thing happening and it's the Viper Queen who had set up Hunt and his two friends who wanted to get Synth. And we find out that he's known for like a week about Synth and had planned on using it until she showed him the drug trials and how it makes them like just decimate everyone and then basically kill themselves. So as soon as that like drug trial thing happened, I was like, okay, I'm kind of thinking that like either Danica or somebody else took the drugs and then ripped themselves apart. And in a very info dumpy chapter where he just basically reveals everything, that all gets revealed that that's essentially what happened. Um, I don't like when things are kind of shown like that. For one, I don't like it when like a POV character is hiding something and there's no indication in the POV. I just think it's lazy. That would not be a problem if we didn't get his POV, but we do. So all that's revealed. So now I'm kind of like, is that what really happened? It sort of sounds like it, it was. Like she, but I'm not sure if she had actually like taken the drugs or someone dosed her Danica um I don't know I, I'm not sure like yes her taking the drugs makes sense just based on her history but I'm not sure that that's what happened I feel like it was almost a setup of someone like dosed her to make all this happen and, and make it look like it was her fault oh we also get the reveal that Bryce traded her spot in the bone quarter and they kind of revealed that like oh there's other like sort of underworlds around the world too and if you trade your spot you can't die anywhere so she traded her spot for Danica because she was worried Danica wouldn't have a spot like her soul wouldn't be light enough to make the journey or whatever um I'm, I'm still like okay I'm not unconvinced that Danica won't make it back because of the whole through love, all, all things persevere or whatever. Now I feel a little better that I wasn't all 100% for her and Hunt because he did still like cover up and it was shady, but I see why he was trying to do it, blah, blah, blah. But if this is their little breaking point and how like the other guy kind of comes in and then becomes like this love triangle, I'm okay with that. I love a love triangle in books like this specifically.
I'm gonna go to bed and I like, feel like I need to get more thoughts out because I'm not gonna read anymore before bed. I'm just gonna spend all day tomorrow finishing up the book. So up through chapter, what, 65, we said? Whatever. This doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense that him and two other angels, rebels, whatever, uh, the Wraith and the one other angel, that they thought that they were gonna do anything with that synth that would leave any kind of lasting rebellion. Like, I guess they were like, they're gonna give it to other rebels. I just feel like they didn't have enough of a group that that made enough sense to do and to take that risk. And Hunt, as a general, and even though it was like years ago and whatever, like he's strategic. So this whole plan makes no sense for the characters to do that. It's like Hunt and Victoria were talked about as being like very intelligent, potentially conniving, whatever. So to have this like synth plan to be like, yeah, we're, they were gonna take it, and especially in light of the Medwitch, which I wanna get to that other point too, because I, I was thinking the gears were turning, especially with the Medwitch kind of hinting that she might be able to remove his tattoo. Why would he take that risk with the synth? And like a very flimsy plan out of character. So I feel like either that was poorly written or there's gonna be more reveals that reveal that this wasn't exactly quite true. There's also a little bit of that thing at the very end of that part, what was that, part three, um, where Fury and Rune are talking as like Bryce is kind of out of it and Rune is kind of saying, oh, like you couldn't have helped them like the other two that weren't Hunt and she's like, they were traitors, what could I do? I'm like, why would she have wanted to help anyway? It was very confusing. But then I was thinking more about the Medwitch. We have not gotten the Medwitch's name and this could be a stretch. But the only other thing I could think of was like, is the Medwitch somehow connected to the fallen Asteri or whatever that like was taken down? Because why would we not have a name? She's just referred to as the Medwitch. Why would we not have a name? I feel like the name is gonna be important and the only missing link that I've heard referenced a few times is that like missing Asteri, whatever, how do you pronounce it? Eh? Eh? House of Earth and Blood, chapter 67 through 72, a.k.a. the Why is Bryce so dumb, Chronicles. Today was a wash day, so you guys get to see me clips and all. Um, I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed that Bryce is uh, stupid. Fury tells her about Hunt being taken by Sandriel again, being sold off, and she's like, he's my only best friend left, and I'm going to go save him. So, like, you know, sort of makes 180 out of nowhere. And she says at the end of that chapter, uh, Fury said to not do anything stupid, but she does something smart. And so I'm like, okay, she's going to have some plan. Maybe she's going to bring in Rune. No. She goes and tries to buy him back, which valiant effort, but also obviously the evil bitch queen is not going to take money for this person that she really deeply wants to torture. And then she hands over her amulet that's priceless and has been protecting her all this time. And Sandra just melts it just melts it like doesn't even take it just melts it because bryce is stupid then offers herself again why why this man just basically betrayed you so why and believe me i love loyalty i'm a leo very big on the loyalty however if someone screws you over like that and does some dumb shit, you should probably have a better plan. Like, I, I'm okay with her trying to help him. Have a better plan. Then she gets pissed when Rune saves her and, like, reveals sort of who she is, which Sandriel already knew. And she's like, I will never forgive you for this. I will never forgive that you mess this up for us, whatever. And he's like, I didn't mess up anything. This was never going to work. Because it wasn't. Of course, that was never going to work. And why would she even do that? And then she is pissed at him when they save her from the demon and deletes his number from her phone. And he's like, go cry about it because no one's going to side with you. And he's right. Like, she keeps doing the same shit, running headfirst into shit over and over, thinking she's going to get a different outcome, and she doesn't. And I would be fine with that and the stubbornness if that happened at the beginning of the book, and then slowly over time she learns and adapts her behavior and starts, like, changing things and making plans. But she doesn't. So she just comes across as insufferable and annoying. Okay. House of Earth and Blood, chapter 73 through 80. <laughs> Did I shed a tear during this? I did. So we get the reveal that Mike is the big bad guy. Mike is the one that dosed Danica and the pack and essentially killed them, whatever. The problem with this reveal for me, personally, is the, the villain monologue. <laughs> the villain monologue of, 
I am wasting time by telling you my entire plan. And this entire plan is happening to be broadcasted to everyone at the summit because Jezebel had, you know, cameras and is showing everyone. Um, and also just the fact that, like, it doesn't really make sense that Jezeba would, like, show everyone what's going on, I guess, is a chance to, like, help Bryce, but how has it helped Bryce? It hasn't really. So it was just a method for everyone to learn that Micah was, in fact, the bad guy. But I was right. She was the horn. I didn't know it was the tattoo. I should have known it was the tattoo. But she is essentially the horn. This all makes sense. She just happens to have another amulet, though. (laughs) Just another priceless... I mean, it's not priceless. It had a price. But another very rare amulet she just has now. But this whole thing is also her ordeal, which they didn't really go into detail about what an ordeal is, and I'm guessing she's going to come into some kind of power after this. But he tried to kill the Chimera. I knew it wouldn't die, but I was still, like, very scared. Uh, And then Lahaba, is that her name? It's so hard when I just read things, because certain names my brain just skims over. But her sacrifice as her friend... Okay, the reason I cried was mostly because this reminded me so much of the Hodor hold the door from Game of Thrones. So the combination of like, my friends are with me and then they all like, they all rise at the summit besides Sandril who sucks um, and are almost like saluting her sacrifice. I'm gonna cry again. They're basically acknowledging that she was like part of their house, like the the angel and the fey house and stuff because sprites were like outcast. (laughs) And all so that she could go to that god killer weapon and shoot him kind of cool we knew the god killer weapon was going to be a thing right um and she just so happened to store the anecdote right there oh and we found out that um that uh the med witch is the the witch queen who rune is supposed to marry anyway we love to see it anyway big switch in tone um but yeah so that was that was good but that was sad um, and I, I do like that there was hints that basically the Asteri are going to be like the big, big bad because Micah was the big bad for this. But like those people are going to be like the big villain, right? Like Micah was like the Amarantha or whatever her name is of this book. But the info dumping never ceases. I just want this to be written like better. House of Earth and Blood, 81 to 89. A, a lot, a lot more has been revealed. I will say again, the way that things are relayed is just a lot of, again, like, info dumping or people telling stories that I just think that could be done so much better. But anyway, demon portals everywhere, everywhere. I did get a little misty again when Ethan said he was going to go help her when he defied the orders and all the, like, shifter animals went running. Yeah. I I do love, like, a call to arms kind of scene and, and her, like, saving him, all that. Then we finally get the reveal that she's starborn. That I didn't actually see coming. Um, I didn't realize that, like, that would have been... Like, it makes sense. Um, Like, what would blind an oracle? Starborn light. Um, So, yeah. But the fact that, like, all of this is getting revealed while they're at the summit, it just feels... I don't know. It just feels a little weird and disjointed. Then we get Hunt's halo removed, and he gets to kill Sandril. Very nice. Although I will say, very typical of Sarah Jamas fashion, I just feel like they're killing off potential antagonists, like, so fast. Like, I thought, okay, Micah would die in this book, and then Sandra will be around for a while, uh, and she's not, which I was a little, like, it feels very Amarantha 2.0. But the fact that she kept everything a secret for Rune so he could stay a chosen one, but he's like, that wouldn't have mattered. And then they're, they're going to help. They are now going to help. And I'm, I'm liking, like, the little, like, certain sort of heads of the city and stuff. Um, especially the Witch Queen. So cool. But he kills her, and then all of them bow to him. So it's like, is he now, like, the next in power? Is that how you, like, uh, how you take over? Maybe? Because they're obviously going to be going up against the Asteri now. That's obviously going to happen, because now she's going to be a big threat. I am thinking more and more now that maybe her and Hunt are endgame. I don't know. There just hasn't been enough of whoever the second person was, which is apparently people have told me it's Adis, which I was like, really? Um, as, as like the, the potential the potential threat. But I just feel like it's setting up so much for like, that like he brought her back to life. She was waiting for him. My heart was waiting for you. All this stuff. That feels endgame to me. But we'll see. I think my next update will be 
the final update. I'm going to read till the end now, unless something crazy happens in the next two chapters that I really feel like I need a full video for. Chapter 91 through the end, I just read the lighted up Danica, Danica from the Bone Corner. <laughs> She's making the drop with Danica. Oh my god, I'm gonna go play. Oh my god. She was gonna give up down there. And then Danica was like, no, like the whole pack helped her get over there and and helped her make the ascent. And then Danica like <laughs> gave her last little bit of life. <laughs> and then Sabine, I didn't care this much until this last little bit. And then Sabine was like, she's not alone when the Autumn King said that she was. She's alone. No, she's not. Oh my God. I do think it's kind of funny that we have Hunt trying to like do compressions on her and he's like, say I love you to my fucking face. <laughs> okay, so she made that drop past even like the Autumn King's power using all the power. So is she gonna like keep all that? Now she's like super powerful. I mean, it makes sense for a Sarah Jamath character to be like super powerful, uh, but like, Also, I do think I do think they're endgame. This whole like he had to go through everything to be here for her, they're mirrors to each other. I would be very stunned. I would be very stunned if they didn't end up together with all the language surrounding them. Pause for an almost sex scene. Which really just ruins the momentum of the ending. But now Isaiah is in charge and it looks like Hunt just looked down at his wrist and maybe the tattoo is gone. Okay, tattoo removed by the Asteri to try to keep them in line. Like, that's gonna go well. But the scene with her and Rune where they're like, You're my sister, you're my brother. That's sweet. But the epilogue, who's the, uh, like, how is the light different? How did Jezebel know Hunt's dad? I don't think we really talked about, like, any of that stuff. Obviously, it's all gonna be book two stuff. But... I don't know why people were fighting over, like, if she's going to end up with... A I don't think she's going to end up with Adis. Maybe I'm wrong. I just feel like her and Hunter are, like, very solidly, like, linked now. I don't know. But the little ending that she got where got she got to see the pack on the shore. Um, yeah. Anyway, I will do a full review of this as well on my YouTube channel and here. Just to give, like, my overall review and not just immediate emotional reactions.